Hi there, I'm Beth, and I've wanted a proper dress form in smart doll size for a while now. I'd like to be able to pin fabric and trims to the form as I plan things out. Today I'll be sharing both a tutorial and a downloadable sewing pattern for the dress form that I've created, though it is possible to make your own, and you can do this for any size of doll. I removed the arms and head from my doll, made sure her back was straight, I wrapped her in cling film and then a layer of masking tape. I drew lines where I wanted seams and darts to be, then carefully cut along the lines, leaving me with my rough pattern shapes. I traced these onto paper and added seam allowance where needed. My daughter thought that my first test piece made a fantastic pincushion. Here's my prototype dress form. I added a stand using a scrap of wooden dowel set into a wood slice. These are the tape pieces I cut for my smart doll and the final pattern pieces I made. This includes a neck and a base piece. The outward kidney bean curve faces the front and there's a hole in case you want to add a stand too. Here I'm including these circles which I used as templates to make the top of the neck and to mark the armholes. For the base I've cut a piece out of medium weight iron-on interfacing. And for the neck and arms I've cut these from heavy weight interfacing, although you could just use cardboard instead. For the main body fabric I've chosen a medium weight 100% cotton in a light cream colour. For the template placement, try to align the centre lines with the selvage edge. Don't place them on the bias or use stretchy fabric, because once stuffed, your dress form will become larger than intended. You can fold your templates in half to help see the middle line and align it with the grain of the fabric. Use the straight edge along the bottom to help with these angles. Here are my outlines ready to cut, but before you do, take care not to cut into the darts. You can see I've drawn a line from point to point across each of my darts, so cut along this line instead. I'll mention it again later, but if you want to add this decorative stitch line that runs down the centre front of the torso, then sew it now. It's purely to help you see the centre line, but isn't necessary. Once everything's cut out, we can start by sewing the darts. There are four to help shape the hips and butt, and two for the bust sides. Here I folded the dart in half, right sides in, with a pin marking the end of the dart, and the other holding the wide end secure. I sew starting at the wide end, moving towards the point, and as with all seams, I do some reverse stitches at the start and end to secure. Here all the darts are sewn, and I've used the iron to press all the darts seam allowance upwards. Next I'm taking the centre front pieces and the two back pieces, and with right sides in, I'm aligning them at the shoulders. There's a 5mm seam allowance included in my pattern, 
so leaving 5 millimeters, so across both the shoulders. Here they're sewn. Now let's open out the seam allowance and press with the iron. Next, we'll align the side sections with the front and backs. With the right sides facing in, pin as you go. I start pinning from the front up to around the bust. Then I move to the bottom of the back and work both sides up towards the shoulder curve. If you find it difficult to ease the shoulder in place, you could use a tacking stitch instead of pins here, or cut little snips into the seam allowance. Here my seam is all pinned, making sure the shoulder seam is still opened, so now I'll sew all the way around. I found it easier to sew with the side panel facing upward, and I stopped often to lift the presser foot to make sure I wasn't catching any folds in the fabric, especially around the shoulder curve. Here's my first side sewn in. I'm going to snip the seam allowance wherever there are curves so the fabric isn't pinched when it's turned right side out. Repeat as before to sew in the second side piece. Once sewn, snip the seam allowance curves, turn the body right side out and check the seams for any puckering or tucks. You can always unpick a little section and re-sew it at this stage, since there are some tricky curves here. Next, grab the neck piece. I've folded it in half to mark the centre with a pin. Match with the centre front of the body and pin with right sides facing. Pin each side to the body then either pin or use a tacking stitch to secure before sewing. I'm doing a tacking stitch since it's quite a curvy shape again. Once machine stitched, I finger press the seam allowance upwards. On each side of the back, either overlock or zigzag, from at least the curve of the lower back to the next seam. We'll be leaving that section open for stuffing the dress form later. Next, bring together the opening seams, right sides in and pin. We will sew the top and the bottom part of this seam, leaving the upper back open. I will mark this clearly on the downloadable pattern. Here we see the centre back seam with the reinforced opening area. Now 
Now grab the kidney bean shaped bottom pieces, cotton and interfacing. Layer them so the shiny side of the interfacing faces outward and the right side of the cotton faces in to the centre. Sew this circle with a small machine stitch, then carefully make small cuts in the centre to allow for the interfacing to pass through the hole. Carefully pass the interfacing through the hole, try not to laugh, then the shiny side should be facing the back of the fabric now. Iron it to fuse. There! <laughs> I fold it to help mark the front and back centres, then pin to the open bottom of the body, right sides in. If you didn't sew the decorative front centre stitching, you can fold the front hem in half and pinch to mark where the centre is. Either pin or use a tacking stitch to continue aligning the base with the rim of the body. I found it easiest to sew with the base at the bottom, stopping frequently and lifting the foot to avoid tucks etc. And after that we can turn the whole thing right side out. Okay, now I'm opening out the seam allowance at the neck and tucking in the seam allowance like this. Try to keep it level. Take the card or interfacing circle piece for the neck and cut a circle of your cotton fabric roughly twice the size. Tie a knot in your thread and sew a running stitch round the outside edge of the circle. And pull to gather around the neck piece not your thread, and then we will sew this covered disc to the top of the neck. If it feels too flimsy, temporarily put some stuffing in the neck to help you with sewing the top of the neck. I'm using a ladder stitch all around to secure the neck. Now I'm pulling out the stuffing I had inside because I'm going to add a piece of wooden dowel to act as a stand. It'll go all the way through the body for the best stability. I'll have to cut this one down to size later, but I have chosen one that'll be long enough for the dress form to be displayed at the same height as my smart doll. I insert the dowel. You could add a dab of glue to the top to stick it to the neck if you wanted, but I'm just going to start stuffing the body. Be sure to get stuffing all around the dowel and pack it in tightly. 
At this point, you can measure your smart doll's hips, waist and bust and compare to your dress form. It's still possible to make alterations if your fabric has stretched more than expected. You can remove the stuffing, turn the body so the seams are outside and add stitching further in from your original seams where needed. If you're happy with your measurements though, then go ahead and close up the back opening. I use a ladder stitch here. Next, we'll make these discs to indicate the armholes, as you see here on the prototype. It's exactly as before for the top of the neck. Cut fabric roughly twice the size of the discs, running stitch round the outside, then pull in to gather. They should align with the top of the shoulder curve. And again, I use a ladder stitch to secure them in place. If you'd prefer to leave these off for a more streamlined look, then you certainly could. Now, if you would like to add a little more shaping like I have on my prototype here, with the side bust, hips, butt and navel more defined, this is done with a long doubled thread on your needle. Use the longest needle you can get here, or you risk losing it inside the form. This one, I believe, is an upholstery needle. I pass it through where the darts end, holding the loop at the start. Then pass back through just a few millimetres to the side and catch the loop to secure. Adjust the strength of the dimpling by pulling on the thread. Pass the needle under the surface to move along and create a new pair of dimples wherever needed. I like to make two pairs at the bust to hold in the sides more. Once you've adjusted them to your liking, make a knot on the surface to secure. Then pass the thread tail out through a side and snip to hide the tail. This is where I remembered that decorative front centre scene. Again, it's purely an aesthetic choice, but it's along this seam that I added dimples in the crease of the butt and navel. On this body, I set my dimples on the two front seams instead. I wanted to show yet another way to adjust the form if you don't want to go back to adjust seams. If your waist is still a little larger than the Smart Dolls, you might try this. I've secured my thread at the centre back and passed it around the waist, surfacing at each seam, making a loop just under the fabric surface. I can pull the thread tighter to pull in the waist, but it does create a little bubbling in the fabric. Secure the thread with a knot once you're happy. Here, I'm happy with my dress form and have marked on my wooden dowel where I need to cut. I'm fortunate to have some wooden slices here from an old tree in the garden, 
but there are many other ways you could weigh down the base. A container filled with stones, a concrete disc perhaps. For this example though, I need only drill out a hole to fit the dowel. There we go, and I'll add a dab of glue at the base and where the dowel meets the fabric to secure all the parts well. And I'm done! It's sturdy and it's the same height as my Smarties and I can pin and drape fabric to my heart's content. Please let me know what you think of this project in the comments. Will you try it yourself? Have you made these for other dolls? You'll find the pattern linked in the description to my website shop. If you're new here, check it out for other doll sewing patterns, freebies and sometimes clothes and shoe sales too. Stay till the end for something new as well. Before we finish, I would like to show off the beautiful Mori skirt that Eclectic Wandering shared over on Instagram. I love the colours they've used, and the trims added to the hip as well. They were the first to try out this sewing pattern, and shared it using the hashtag BethRamsdenCrafts. If you'd like to be featured too, use the hashtag and tag me as well when you share something you've made using my patterns or tutorials. If you've shared pictures before and want to give me permission to share them in a video, please send me a message. I would be delighted to feature you too. Thanks so much for watching. See you again soon. Bye!